14 ingredients that are going to add the humor or bring the funny to your communication. What's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Charming Confident Communication and you are here with myself Munir live at 5 and today we are talking about 14 ways that you can add humor to your presentations, to your to your communications, to your talking. And basically, I'm going to be talking to you about all the ingredients. The There are 14 ingredients that I'm going to be sharing with you today or 14 ways that you can become funnier or bring humor to things, to your communication or otherwise. Or basically, 14 ways to be funny, right? Um, now, or 14 types of humor, another way to put it. Now, if you're tuning in live, please uh, tune in, say hello, let me know you're here, drop in a message, say what's up, say hello, let me know you are online. So, let's get cracking and today I'm going to do this a different way. Today I am going to be sharing my screen. So we're going to try this, yes, completely, let me do this. Dun, dun, dun. Can you see my screen? There we go. All right. So let me start before that. Let me start off with a blank sheet first. Okay. So um, many people, uh, one of the, the biggest misunderstandings or bi the biggest misconceptions is that people are born funny or you are just naturally funny. Let me tell you something. When I was growing up, right? When I was just a young whippersnapper, like a little small little kid, right? Uh, this is not how I looked. I actually looked a lot geekier than this. But when I was a young kid, I was not funny. I was the most awkward, shy, randomly like bullied kid. I was not... Uh, and here, let me show you. So this is... Where is it? Come on, there we go. This was me when I was growing up. I was this really shy, awkward uh, kid and I did not have a funny bone in my body. No funny bones at all. Laurie, great to see you. Thanks for tuning in. Great uh, to have you on. Thanks for tuning in. All right. So when I was growing up, shyest, most awkwardest kid ever. I did not have a funny bone in my body. I desperately wanted to be liked, I desperately wanted to be popular and so one of the first things that I ever did was I started to pick up uh, books on how to be, uh, like, no, not how to be funny, I actually picked up joke books and I started to learn joke books because I remembered going to my uncle's house and my uncle would, uh, like him and his friends, they'd just sit there and they'd tell jokes and they'd tell jokes and they'd all start to laugh and laugh and they'd all laugh at each other and etc. And I was like, wow, this, you know, I'd love to give people that feeling. I'd love people to enjoy so much being around me. Let me start to learn jokes. So I picked up a joke book and I started to learn jokes. Now, initially, I wasn't very good at telling them, but I started to learn them, and I learned them, and I started to tell them to people, and I start, slowly started getting laughs and laughs and laughs, etc. So, I, uh, I studied, I literally just studied joke books, right? And um, slowly but surely, I started to notice patterns. You know, when I, when I started to study them, I started to notice, like, wow, okay, the, there's a pattern here, like literally you'd say something and then all of a sudden it would change the direction. The humor comes because you're expecting something and then something changes, like uh, what uh, an unexpected twist happens. And so I started to notice a pattern and then I started to study different forms of humor, etc. But this, what I'm going to go through today, when you look at all 14 of these different elements, they are all funny because you're expecting something and then all of a sudden there's a twist. There's something different about it, okay? So, let me go through the patterns. Let me just pull this up. Okay, cool. Number one. First of all, we have physical comedy. So this is a little clip that I uh, that is from the film that I created called A Heated Interview. Go onto YouTube and check it out. It's a short comedy that uh, we did a little while back. 
And in this clip, literally, uh, main character, which is uh, who's played by Ali, my friend Ali, he he says, uh, you know, finding a job in this economy is harder than finding Muhammad at the men's section of a wedding. Now. This clip is funny because of physical humor. There are no words said over here. It literally, he just goes into a place and says Muhammad and the, the physical element adds the humor. So check this out. So uh, if you, let me just play that again. He says Muhammad, a whole bunch of people turn around. The, the, the humor here is added by the physical aspect. There's also, you know, things like we call slapstick comedy and all these these types of things. That's where humor comes in. When I'm when I'm interacting with my kids and I'm playing with my kids, like my, my son is like two years old. He doesn't understand jokes. So when I literally kind of like when I make him laugh, I just go da -da -da, boom and I fall down. I'm doing physical comedy. I'm making him laugh through physical humor. And, you know, a lot of people have made this uh, become famous just through physical uh, comedy, like Charlie Chaplin, um, um, Albert and Costello. You know, these these guys back in the day when they weren't you weren't able to talk on movies. A lot of the comedy came from physical humor. So that's number one. Number two is. Hold on. Wordplay. OK, so. Uh, a lot of dad jokes are wordplay. Safia, great to see you. Rima, great for tuning in. Thanks for, for tuning in. Great to see you. Okay, so uh, the next thing is wordplay. And wordplay is like a, a lot of dad jokes are wordplay. It's puns. But essentially what happens in the mind is when you trigger two different aspects, uh, two different meanings that the, the mind hasn't put together that, that, that are completely separate. It triggers two things and you're, you're, you unconsciously laugh because it's like, uh, how are those two connected? Um, and, and so that's why puns are, they're, 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 they're very good. They can also be very cheesy because they're, they're sometimes they're a bit too easy, right? <laughs> and that's why they call dad jokes. But uh, the reason I have this picture here is, uh, what's a deer with no eyes? No idea. <laughs> All right. I'll be here all week. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, <laughs> aren't you glad you're watching? <laughs> right. So um, what's a deer with uh, no eyes and no legs? Still no idea. I know they get better. They get better. I swear. Uh, uh, what's a deer with no eyes, no legs and no blood? Still no bloody idea. Okay, I'll be here all week. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> I didn't say it was good. I'm just explaining the different types of humor. All right. So uh, that was a wordplay. Uh, that's 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 my wordplay uh, little <laughs> picture there for you. So the next one is risky humor. Risky humor is literally where all the naughty jokes come from. Right now, this is this is very powerful uh, again because it literally triggers a certain part of your mind which is the taboo part right um it it, I, it is actually stored in a different part of our mind all the taboo things that's why we, when people that have Tourette's it's uh, have that part of their mind that is constantly triggered and that's why they swear a lot now when we uh, we have this part of our mind that says don't do this in polite company and so when jokes are using lots of risky elements they tend to make us laugh in uh, because because you're using risky elements now this is Facebook this is a family platform I'm not going to tell you any risky and naughty jokes so uh, if you want any just go and google it all right <laughs> all right cool let's uh, move swiftly on so then we have dry and expressionless humor. So uh, I'll give you an example. I went into a, a shop the other day and I was with a friend of mine and I went, you know, I went to, to go buy something and someone before me had said something like said something silly. So when it was my turn to go to the shopkeeper, I went up to him and I went, um, yeah, so uh, I guess he's not coming back again. And the, the shopkeeper went, looked at me and he went, yes, yes, no problem, yes. And I was like, you have, you have no idea what, I'm, what I just said, do you? And he went, yes, sir, yes, no problem. And I went, all my humor is totally lost on you, uh, is it, isn't it? And he went, yes, sir, yes, sir. And my friend is snickering behind me. 
And so dry, dry humor is like we literally your face is expressionless. It looks like whatever you're saying is completely serious. But when you're what you're like, you're expressionless. But what you're delivering is 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 funny. And so um, it's difficult to tell that you're telling a joke. Right. That's that's where dry and expressionless humor comes in. It's, it's a little it's, it's basically sarcasm as well uh, can kind of fall into this dry expressionless humor. Right. So uh, this is uh, this is another one quite powerful. Cool. Let's go on to the next one. Self-deprecating humor. OK, uh, this is I do this a lot in some of my videos. Uh, this this video, if you go on to YouTube, let me just show you which one I'm talking about. So this video, uh, this is a video thumbnail from my YouTube channel. And if you go onto my YouTube channel, this particular video I filmed when I went to Vietnam. And so to give you a quick backstory, when I went to Vietnam, I went on a tour. This tour was like an hour away from my hotel. And I went to what, what are called the Coochie Tunnels. Now, Coochie Tunnels are in the Vietnam War. The Vietnamese didn't have as much funds as the Americans, etc. And so to give them an advantage, they dug lots of tunnels and literally were living underground in these tiny, tiny tunnels and they would attack from under the ground so that uh, because the the Americans would were would be over the ground, etc. Right. And so the Coochie Tunnel are this this network of 200 kilometers worth of tunnels, like really fascinating. Anyhow, long story short, when I went to the Coochie Tunnels, I went into one of the tunnels when I first started the tour. I got there. So we've been driving an hour. I get there. I get into one of the tunnels just to take a picture. And then as I step out of the tunnel, like I bring out one of my legs and my pants tear like right where the sun shouldn't shine. The, my pants tear right where, you know, like it's a no photo zone. This, you know, this would be censored in, in many cultures. It's, it's deemed inappropriate. Um, you know, it's, it, it's like torn, right? You know what I'm talking about, right? Anyhow, so when I tell this story, I, I, you know, I use self-deprecating humor because I, I was like, you know, a lot of people think I was when on that tour, a lot of people thought I was polite because what I'd done is I'd, um, I tied my jacket so no one would notice that I had torn pants. But, uh, you know, we were bending over to go through tunnels, etc. And I would let all these people pass in front of me. Uh, I would never and, and people would be like, no, you first. And I'd be like, no, you first. Like so there's a town somewhere that thinks I'm the most like polite person ever to exist. Like I would not, <laughs> you know, let anyone go after me. I would always let everyone go before me. But it was literally because I didn't want people to see my uh, what I had for breakfast. Right. I didn't want anyone to see what was going down down there. There was no landscaping, you know. So anyhow. When I start to tell these stories, like I start to use de self deprecating humor where I'm making fun of myself and I'm making fun of what was going down there, what was going on in my head, etc. So that's uh, self deprecating humor. All right. Now let's move on. So that's self deprecating humor. The next one is visual. So using pictures to tell her to, to bring out laughter. So this is like literally when I came out in that in my uh, out of the tunnel and uh, my pants tour, there was an old woman over there who literally saw everything. And this was her face. Uh, <laughs> so I'm literally letting the picture bring out the laughter. So this is where visual humor comes about. Cool. All right. So let's move on to the next one. Then we have impressions. Now impressions sort of like uh, is, is literally where someone is very familiar with you as a person or, or, uh, the, the character that you're doing an impersonation of. And because it's coming from you, they laugh. That's where the humor comes because it's unexpected. Um, so, uh, I like you very much. It's Facebook. It's so nice to have you. It's so nice. I like you very much. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, it's very nice. Uh, I like you very much. Thank you. Uh, that was really terrible. My my really terrible Borat impression. Uh, I didn't say they would be amazing, but <laughs> my wife, she is dead. 
It's nice to meet you. <laughs> All right. So that's my uh, so impressions can be very powerful, especially if you're doing it for someone that doesn't made uh, get have lots of people making impressions of them. So if you do it to, of a friend or your partner or something like that, it can be really cool. Or you do it of very popular characters. So impressions can be very powerful, especially if you're talking about something in particular, like, um, uh, uh, yeah, for example, this presentation. I like presentation. It's nice. I learn a lot about being funny. <laughs> All right. Anyhow, <laughs> let me move on. So uh, improv humor. Now, I so at this moment in time I've got a couple of people on typically what I do is I might ask you to just even give me a character give me a funny situation and I'll add some humor to it uh, or I'd make something up on the spot and uh, what you could do is even go to my YouTube channel and search for helping hands and you'll see some of the improv humor that we've done in the past where we've gone on stage and people have yelled out different things and we've acted out uh, different scenarios. Improv humor is just literally making things up on the spot based on what people have said. And that can be very funny because uh, you're giving a new twist to what people uh, would expect out of those situations. They have no idea what to expect as well. So uh, it is uh, quite funny. Cool. Uh, next one is observational humor. So observational humor, like for example, have you, uh, for those of you that are parents out there, you, you know, when I, if I talk about teaching my kids, right? Have you noticed like how we thought that our kids were really smart and they're going through, going, have, having a great education. And then all of a sudden we have to teach them. And then you're like, oh my God, <laughs> like what is going on? Like, <laughs> um, and so when you start to do these things where you're observing and it's sort of uh, observational humor very most of the time starts off with like a have you noticed okay uh, have you noticed all right so uh, that's that's kind of observational humor actually before we b before we move on to a couple of the other ones I want to go back for a minute and just show you um, a couple where I'm putting two things together so Two, uh, two different ones. So looking at impressions and visual, like if I were to do um, Batman, uh, you know, th there I've just literally used visual humor and an impression in order to bring about some humor, right? So that's, that's so you, can, you don't even need to tell jokes, but you can use your visuals to create humor. Cool, let's move on. So we've talked about observational. Then there are pattern humor. So what do I mean by pattern humor? Like where you establish a pattern, our brain likes to go into patterns. So if you establish like the rule of three, in fact, let me, let me tell you first, um, three keys to, to success with teaching your children, right? The first is you gotta have a lot of patience with your kids, all right? The second is you have to have an excellent system for, uh, for, for teaching them like a, a great curriculum. And the third is give them up for adoption. Uh, th then you'll have success with educating your kids, right? So <laughs> um, now I made that up like literally just before I did this presentation. However, you see what happens in these scenarios is one, you're, you're going down a path with the rule of three. They're expecting a certain thing. They're expecting a th certain thing. And then on the third, you, give, you, you take a completely different direction. So that's very, very powerful pattern humor. Cool. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, so that was pattern humor. Let's move on to the next one. Topical humor. Now, again, I just Googled this just before I came onto, uh, onto this video. And so this is in the news today. Elon Musk tried to explain Bitcoin to JK Rowling on Twitter and uh, the internet has loved it. So J uh, for those of you that don't know who JK Rowling is, she's uh, the author of the Harry Potter series of books. And uh, so, you know, so if you take a story like that and then you just sort of say, yeah, so uh, and then you add your own little twist to it, it's it's topical. So you're taking what's popular right now. And, and you know, what did Elon Musk tell her that, you know, you basically use the Obscuro Spelliamas for your money or the Expeller Expelliarmus on traditional currency. You know what? I, OK, I'm not the, I'm not the biggest Harry Potter geek. I actually Googled. I actually Googled some of the spells just before I came on. And these were the spells, but I can't I can, obviously I'm not 
uh, I'm not the, the best of magicians. Uh, I am, I am, however, a hypnotist. Whoa. Not a magician, hypnotist. So, uh, <laughs> forgive my spell making. The next is situational comedy. So, when I talk about situational comedy, in like talking about how you are in, were in different situations, or how certain other people in different situations, like people you know that are in different situations. Um, when I when I used to do stand up comedy, I used to talk about my travels a lot. And I used to talk about how in Romania, I was literally like uh, Romania, you know, they, they hadn't seen a, a brown person since 1954. And so when I was there, like people, when they go on holiday, they take pictures. When I went on holiday in Romania, people were coming and taking pictures of me. Right. Um, and so that's that's situational. That's where I was in a certain situation in this picture is just me in uh, New York City and uh, well, nothing much there. That's the, that's visual humor for you. <laughs> um, cool. So that's situational uh, humor. Then we have a parody humor, which is literally taking something that you know very, like very well inside out and just doing a little twist on it. So it's taking popular culture and just uh, yeah something like popular culture and giving a little twist that adds a little bit more humor to it. So. Um, for example, over here in this in these examples, uh, these uh, this is artwork uh, created by my my buddy uh, Rick, and uh, <laughs> literally he put he put my picture on the blade, uh, the the blade poster, and then we have Lethal Arabs three, and uh, there's me, um, Rick and Mo. So uh, Lethal Arabs three, you know, the, the, and and you can do it about a. a with with movies you can do it with songs so for example let's say you are talking about uh, uh covid 19 right and what's going on right now and then we we we, we say hey we're gonna make a we're gonna make a, a music album for covid 19 then you find for, like popular songs that everyone knows and then uh you you just you just change a couple of words or put that in context okay so like let's say covid 19 and then you say uh, mc hammer uh you know you yeah mc hammer is back with you can't touch this or you can't shake this you know like with my hand uh you know you you just you just take something that's very popular and you change one little thing about it or uh the and that's that's parody humor cool right let's move on to the next one. Oh, did you see that uh wait maybe wait no, let me go back. Uh, what happened? So just in case, in case you didn't see that, that was the parody humor, uh, the the uh, the movie posters, and then the next one is next one is insult comedy, uh, and this is literally making laugh, laughing at other people's pain. <laughs> or, but you can do this quite well if you're very good friends with someone and you you have some banter. Like in the UK, a lot of banter is just making fun of each other, like uh, all the time. And um, I've like this is actually one of the first types of humor that I learned um, a lot from joke books, etc. But, uh, you know, saying saying, hey, man, you're so fat when you wear a Malcolm X T-shirt, helicopters want to land on you. Right. That's <laughs> that's that's quite insulting. But <laughs> but if you're saying it to a friend and you, you're saying it in, in good spirit, etc., then literally it can be very, very funny. So in insult humor can be, uh, obviously it's very risky. However, it can be, um, it can pay off if you have the right kind of rapport with people. So insult comedy is, is uh, quite powerful as well. So that was, that, those were 14 ways that you can add humor to your communication and 14 ways that you can become funnier uh, in your communication. So, Hopefully that was useful. Thank you guys uh, very much for tuning in. Um, before I go, like in case you have not, do check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Munir. Uh, let me just, uh, yeah, youtube.com forward slash Munir. On my channel, I have loads of videos that demonstrate a number of these different elements. Um, from when I actually do comedy on purpose to, uh, to more. So uh, in case you have not, do subscribe. Otherwise, I am very grateful for you guys coming on today. And thank you very much for tuning in. 
One love. I will catch you guys on another video very, very soon. Peace out. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you all soon. This was 14 ways to add humor and funny to your communication. Peace out. Bye.